Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our let <laughs> Come on. Got it. <laughs> our let go portrait <laughs> from our um, let it be November watercolor box. This box is all about exploring pen and ink. We have new dandelion paint colors, brand new ones, ones that I've curated and created because I love them so much. Um, and this is just about allowing yourself the freedom to play with your creativity, listen to your creative voice, um, explore the supplies that we have. This is so healthy for your creativity. Sometimes we get so intense about, oh, it has to be this perfect painting that I'm going to frame on the wall and it needs to be frame worthy and it needs to be finished and it needs to be all of these things. And I'm asking you to all of those thoughts and expectations you're putting, pick them up, put them on the side over there and come to this with an open heart and an open mind and let yourself play. Would you okay. say people should just let them go? I would just say like, let it go or let it be. <laughs> These are words of wisdom. <laughs> let it be. Exactly. Right. Okay, so we're gonna do this project in five steps. So our very first step is we're gonna do a background wash using um, some new colors. Our second step is we are going to outline our figure using a pen. Our third step is we are going to layer with textures and different mark makings. Our fourth step is we are going to paint our hair and add some um, more pen marks, sorry. And then our fifth step is we are going to do like some leaves and just some like sketchy textural um, things for our painting. Um, so I am gonna swatch the colors this time because they are brand new colors. I always wanna say, swatch out. Whenever you say swatch. Why? I don't know. <laughs> swatch out. It looks like, it sounds like watch out. And I think it that's does. Fun. So our first color is blush. You can tell by how I said it, that I just love this color so much. And I get questions a lot like, how do you get this like peachy blush color? And so we created a pink color that is just that color. That like, that's it. We did it. Nice. <laughs> so now you don't have to try and mix it. It is made and you guys can use it whenever you want. Our next color is Dusty Rose, which is this gorgeous like pink color, but a little bit desaturated. This is so good for if you're trying to paint a little bit more realistic or you want something to feel a little bit more um, relaxed. Usually vibrant colors create a more active painting as in more energetic, um, where if we use softer, more subtle colors, it creates more of a feeling of calm and peace. Our next color here is golden yellow. And yellow is one of my favorite colors ever. Um, and I really wanted a color that just was a soft gold. It wasn't highlighter, it wasn't green. It was, it was, it's just, it's not orange. It's just a nice soft gold. And then our last color here is um, indigo, which is such a good blue. I just can't, I, <laughs> I need you to understand how much I love this color because it is the perfect color for creating night sky. Ooh, okay. It is so good. We don't do that. But I'm telling you now <laughs> that if you're looking for a night sky color, this is it. Or to dye your jeans. Or to dye your jeans. Exactly. It's just... Okay, I'm not going to talk about these colors anymore. Anyways, those are the four colors that we're using and... I created them just for you guys. These are like Sarah Craig colors. If you look at the paintings I make, I use those colors because I just love them. It's nice because to make blush traditionally, it takes human tears. And now we've bottled it now. so you don't have to cry. You're just crying over here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you nice blush color. You're like, nice. You're like watching sad, like old yeller <laughs> trying to get this blush color. <laughs> yeah. Now we don't have to do that anymore, Skip you guys. Skip that step. You're welcome. It's in a bottle. <laughs> Okay, so I already transferred my outline. It's a very basic outline, which is just the shape of the person. And I really wanted to do a portrait like this because I wanna show you that you don't have to have um, a fully fleshed figure in order for it to be considered a portrait. I also really love the idea of like, who is this woman and what is she feeling and how can we create? For me, I wanted to create a sense of like contentment, of peace, with this figure using the different colors. And there's something so beautiful about just being okay with who and where you are. And this is what this figure reminded me of. And this is what I'm hoping to like 
put in the painting. I'm going to like take up that feeling and put it in my painting. <laughs> if that doesn't sound woo woo, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a bit woo woo sometimes. Okay. So let's do our oath. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm using four paintbrushes. Round two, round six, round 12, one inch wash. I have my pens handy here. And um, we're gonna start with doing our background wash. And I'm gonna take a little bit of indigo. <laughs> and I'm gonna take some blush. And when you mix them together, you actually get this really beautiful kind of like gray, like a tan gray, which I really like. And I'm just going to take my one inch wash and just kind of on top, and you can grab more blush, more indigo, different places. But I'm just gonna kind of work the brush back and forth on top. Now you'll see that there are some spaces where I'm gonna get some lines, maybe where my um, paintbrush got a little bit too dry, maybe where I ran out of paint. And I'm gonna let that be part of the painting. So really we're just kind of like playing with textures that we can get with our one inch wash and you're, and you're not stopping or starting in the same spots either you're doing like jagged we're not going for an even wash exactly yeah i want if you start like here you know what i mean like you'll get this really cool line right in the middle there so allow that to happen and then also allow yourself to get like some dry texture too that's not dry that's dry there you go. And what if we did just blush? So kind of like play with it. Don't overthink it. All of the messiness that your like creative child wants to be and do whenever you paint, let it. Because our adult, we're like, no, you have to be smooth. You got to be even. You got to be... And that's not what we're going to do in this painting. We're just going to let it do its thing and be okay with it. And can I pause and just say, like, look how beautiful this texture is right here. Mm. Gorgeous. George, just Gorgeous, if you will. Gorgeous. I love it. And then look at these blooms that are happening here from the uneven. Like, take a minute and say, whoa, that is so cool. I love how that happened. Good job. Good job, self. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry. And then we are going to outline our figure using our sepia pen. And I went with sepia because these colors are very soft and subtle and they're a light value naturally. Like some colors are a really dark value naturally. Think of like yellow and then think of um, like purple. And if I were to take the color away from them and put it in grayscale, you'll be able to tell what colors are purple and what colors are yellow just because of the value of the color itself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So because I knew that these colors are a light value naturally, I wanted to do a softer line pen, like a brown instead of a black, um, because then it just wouldn't feel as extreme in its contrast. How confident are you in the pronunciation of sepia? Is that right? Listen, I always pronounced it sepia my entire life, and I prefer that way to pronounce it, but the amount of comments I got that it was sepia was insane, that I'm like, I gotta be wrong. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know, but when I started saying sepia, I stopped getting corrected. Should I look it up? Okay. Look it up. Look look, it up. Hear me out, because I think, it, I think sepia works better because of just the rules of spelling. Yeah. Right? S-E-P-I-A. There's no like, it's not S-E-E-P. So I don't know. I'm going to look it up and we're going to learn it together. Friends. Okay, perfect. So I'm taking my pen and I'm just going to outline it. And you'll notice that I'm not doing like strong, like a really strong line. I'm letting my pen kind of lift up and letting it kind of be a little bit sketchy. And sketchy means that there's like multiple lines that kind of go over it. All right, are you ready? You sound um, like you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> ready? Here we yeah, go. Yeah. Sepia. Sepia. It's sepia. Well, uh, I 
I'd like to start my three-part apology <laughs> by saying I think you're all wonderful people. Uh, it's okay. The worst is like, and you guys with the pens, I'm just going over my drawing with this pen. That's it. If you want to add more, you can. If you want to leave some sp spots off, you can too. This is your painting. But um, I am an avid reader. I really love to read. But the problem with that is that you know words <laughs> and you understand how to use the words, but you don't know how to say the words. And the amount of times that I'll... I think I asked our friend one time, we were all hanging out and he was quiet. I'm like, why are you being so stoic? <laughs> you did say stoic. I said stoic. We were all like... <laughs> Do you mean stoic? Do you mean stoic? And I was just like, this is so embarrassing. Stoic. Uh, so that is to say that I'm really sorry if I do not pronounce words right. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> okay. And if you want to give like that kind of um, uh, like single line thing too, where I know I said like, break it up, be sketchy. If you want to do like the continuous line where you don't lift up your pen at all, because we did that in our let it flow project, go with the flow project, then go ahead and do that. Like this is your follow, whatever the little voice inside of you was saying, do it. Okay. That's it. That's step two. Um, now we're going to move on to step three. We're going to start adding different marks and layers. So, I am going to take, let's just see what happens if I take this. I'm going to take my um, brush pen lid and do dots. Bigger, bigger dots here on the left-hand side. Do they make uh, like a dot brush? I'm sure they do. Like a little piece of foam with like, you know? Yeah. Do that, and then I like to mess things up so you can like, you can just smear it directly using the thing. You can take a dry brush and just kind of smear that up. If you want it to look really good, say whoosh while you do it. Sorry, yeah, whoosh. whoosh. Oh, look whoosh. how good those look now. And then sometimes what I like to do is after I smear it, I like to go back and kind of like do it again on top, the dots, just to like reform them and to get some darker values in there. Again, we're just going for textures. And I'm gonna take my one inch wash and using like that same kind of blush indigo mixture that I made, you can do these kind of like, they kind of remind me of um, the text on a newspaper. You know what I mean? Like, doesn't that look like text from far away? Yes. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> but you can do like little dashes if you want to completely dry that brush and just have a little bit of paint you can like spread the bristles and it's subtle this these are subtle texture marks but i like both i like ones that are strong and i like ones that are soft and they work together you know what i mean it reminds me of birch bark okay yep i can see that and look, you can get some kind of like hairy looking ones by spreading the bristles. And maybe you want to do a few that just are stronger and kind of just layer. I do want some more. Oh, that was Dusty Rose. I meant blush. And you can mix some of these colors again, like have this attitude of like, I wonder, I wonder what would happen. This painting looks like, this is such a stretch. Are you ready? Yeah. The movie poster for a dystopian future like Blade Runner, but directed by Sarah Cray. <laughs> with like a blush palette. Yes. Pinks and yellows. She's like and navies. the hero hunting robots. <laughs> Looking into the distance. That is not the energy that I'm trying to put into this painting. <laughs> Am I reading this wrong? <laughs> I don't know. I just really love this idea of like thinking through feelings of 
contentment and peace and letting go and thinking, what colors do I associate with that? What does that feel like to me? Is it still, is it? And for me, I think that what I wanted to do with this is there's a lot of activity going on. There's textures, there's colors, there's movements, there's splatters, but this person feels very calm. And I think that's how we can be. It's like, the world is so crazy. The world is so hard that like, you literally have to be aware of how much news you consume because it's just too heavy. Like yeah. our brains are not, our brains are not made to carry all of that heartache and knowledge. And I think that if we can learn how to coexist in this world where we understand all, maybe not understand, but acknowledge that, yeah, it is crazy and it's also hard, but I can still find peace within myself. Like that's what this painting I was hoping to create with this painting. Love it. Okay. So I added some textures. I really like what happened here. That's really cool. I almost want to put it on the left-hand side a little bit because it feels like I'm creating a strong implied line by having only that dot texture on the right-hand side. I feel like I need to integrate it over here just a little bit so these two halves can connect. I sent you uh, something on Instagram a while ago. It said like, my brain is set up for eating berries in a cave, yeah. not this. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. how I feel sometimes. Okay, I'm just gonna take this indigo in my round six and I'm just gonna kind of do these swooping brush strokes, kind of like the feeling of fabric. Toga. Yeah, like maybe it's a shawl or something. Shawl, that's the word. Togas are Greek. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is she a philosopher? <laughs> and if we wanna grab maybe some dusty rose. Or if you want it to be blush, if you want it to be a little bit softer, I'm going to put just some lines going in this way. And again, like maybe you want to dry out your number six brush. And by dry out, I mean, I'm going to take up some paint and then I'm going to dab it on my paper towel so it grabs all of that excess moisture. And then you're going to have these like really rough texture lines. Like just, just see what happens, you know? And then we could do more defined gold dots on top of the ones. Okay, that feels good. And now I'm going to do the hair. So you can use your round two, you can use your round six. I decided to do indigo for the hair because I introduced indigo down here and I felt like I needed to bring it in another part of the painting. So I'm gonna go along the top and I'm just gonna kind of swoop it in, thinking about the shape of the head. That color is so good. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. And I'm gonna use my round two for like the little, if I wanna do some little strands, little bangs coming off here. Did you ever, like when you were a kid or anything, Scrape your knee and have to put iodine on it. Yes. It reminds me of that yellow color. A totally, yeah. totally. I can see that. And if you want to use your tint, your two for some like thinner brush strokes here, you absolutely can. It's kind of fun to have both, you know? Por qué no los dos? Por qué no los dos? That means why not both in Spanish if you don't, you know, that's our saying. It is our sink. It's mostly concerning desserts. When we're at restaurants and Sarah goes, should I get the chocolate cake or the creme brulee? And I say, por qué no los dos? Yep. And then she eats them both. I do. You try them though. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm lucky. <laughs> okay. And then if you want to like, again, I'm a smeary kind of gal. So if you just want to go in with the damp brush and kind of just smear this color a little bit, you can. You don't have to. Again, this is your painting. And let's take the brush script pen and do, I just love these kind of dots. Freckles. And then smearing them. Again, I'm just using the side of my hand. If you want to use something else, you can. I haven't um, had that pen in my hands yet. Yeah. Is it like a Tombow marker? Is it like a felty tip? Okay. 
I should have gone into more detail about it because it's such a fabulous pen. So it is a brush script pen, which means it's like a paintbrush pen. So you can get the thinnest line and then pressing hard, you can get a super thick Whoa. line. And so it makes it like you can do like calligraphy type. Yeah. Cool. But it reminds me of a paintbrush. So I love that because I can do really nice thin lines, like detail lines. Or pressing down, you know. And sometimes it's because if you've been paint, paint, painting for a while, you might feel a little bit more comfortable with this kind of script tip because it's similar to a round brush. Um, and I love the variation in stroke that you can get with it. Like, look how... That's beautiful, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're kind of just using it for dots here and we'll play with the shape a little bit more in another project. But I wanted to show you, like it just feels kind of like a joy to draw with because of that brush tip. Press in there, smear it, okay. Now, I feel like I need splatters because I only put yellow here. Splatters is another way that you can introduce a color without having to worry about like layering it. So, and of course, smear it just a little bit. But you see how just like adding that element, it all of a sudden feels more connected to this. Mm -hmm. So when we're painting anything, you want to think about, do, do I want these areas to connect? If I do want them to connect, what tools can I use to make them connect? Sometimes it's just the colors we use. Sometimes it's the values that we use. Sometimes it's the brush marks or the textures that we use. They don't have to be all of them. It could just be one or it can be none of them if you don't really want them to connect. But you just want to look at your painting as a whole and say, where does this feel like it's separate? And do I want it to feel like it's separate? And if you don't, then what are some tools that we can bring them back together? Um, and I'm going to take my six and a little bit of that gray color that I mix with the indigo and the blush. And I'm just going to do like the softest little line along the back here. This is like the spine. Maybe you want to do a hint of like a shoulder blade or something. Maybe you want to like add more details or lines here. It's up to you. And now I'm going to take my sepia and I can go over some of these areas again. And we can do um, some continuous line leaves maybe coming out here as if it's kind of She's like covered in these leaves coming off of this fabric. I also had it kind of coming off of her shoulder. Usually though, when you're adding leaves around a person, if you want it to feel like they're a little bit more surrounded, you're gonna curve it with like facing each other. So I wouldn't curve the leaf going this way mm. because I want it to feel like it's like enveloping her I'm curving it towards her. Does that make sense? Cocooning her. Yeah, kind of more like a cocoon. Or and, a chrysalis. I don't know. And now I'm going to add little flowers maybe or leaves around her bun. Again, it's just kind of scribble. We're just going to just go in for it. Here's her ear. And let's do some um, dusty rose dots as well. And I'm gonna do some bigger ones. I didn't do that in my original, but I just feel like it needs it. Ooh, I like that. I like that. I like it. I'm wondering if this got too pink. I'm just gonna see what happens if I do an indigo right over it. Ooh, I like what that did there. I'm gonna do it a little more. So again, 
look at your painting and say, what if I try this? The other thing about splatters is if you do it and you're like, that ended up being too dark, if you immediately go in and just take a paper towel and blot it, it will lighten it up. It won't erase it, but it like sometimes things will just be too dark in value that you're like, I need to soften this up. That feels pretty good. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna smear this And the reason why I did that is I felt like it just feels like there's a lot of stuff on top of her and I wanted to kind of like bring her out a little bit more. So I'm just kind of smearing these texture things into like her skin. So then she kind of works her way forward a little bit. Does that make sense? She's not so buried. Yeah, she doesn't feel as buried. feels good okay that's it that's our project um I really hope that you have fun with this and I hope that it gives you ideas of other things that you can do I was actually even thinking like how cool would it be if you almost did this type of like portrait for a family member maybe your child you know what I mean like because we're not doing faces you could even just do like a silhouette of um of their profile or something like that but like this is just a really loose and new way that you can go about painting a feeling, painting a person. Um, and I think it's just kind of like fun and cool. So I hope that you're able to play with this a little bit more and see what it is that you want to do. I hope that you allow yourself to play with marks and brush strokes and textures and splatters. And, and I hope that you can remember that even though things are crazy, we can be content. We can find that peace um, where, gosh, what, what did I see? Like, I read this quote where it was just like, I want my mind to feel like a calm lake where you can see directly to the bottom. It's so peaceful that it's still. I don't want my brain to be like a storm where this oceans and the waves are crashing and it's spilling everywhere. And I don't know, you know what I mean? It's just like, how can I maintain that peace within my mind where it's just like, you can see directly to the bottom. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what this painting reminds me of. But anyways, um, have fun. Thank you so much for painting with me. Thank you for allowing yourself to do something different and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.